everybody welcome i'm glad you're here i'm mr steve and i've got a couple of extra updates for the ocp one click proxy this add-on is kind of growing quick had some really amazing input i'll give a shout out to robert he came up with two brilliant ideas that i had not thought of but i was able able to add them in to the one click proxy so come on in this would be a quick enough video but informative more of an official uh, like an official let's go over the add-on so you don't miss anything because it's got some very powerful options built into it all right and if you don't have one click proxy you're really missing out this is a growing and very powerful add-on the trial in the middle copies are very basic, but they'll get you a lot of functionality. But the uh, the main one down here for 2.0, this one is going to give you not only a ton of options to speed up your workflows, but your viewport and to store a ton of properties. And that's where all the updates, the biggest updates are. And I'm using Blender 4.0.2. So we can hit the space bar right here. That's very fun, right? And I'll just type in subdivision set here let's do this and then we can just apply it and i want to i don't have that one in there yet i want to shade smooth so let's add that to the quick favorites because i prefer the cube menu quick favorites if you don't use that so now we have a fairly subdivided mesh and what i'm going to do is we can just click ocp and instantaneously we're going to get a proxy and right next to the ocp button this is the button for single. If you happen to have a bunch of objects, then you can hit the OCP all objects and it's going to automatically put a proxy on everything. Now, if you want to toggle all those off, there's a simple button. Green means you're good, you don't have the proxy on. Red means, hey, alert, you've got your proxy on. Then you can simply click one more time and delete all of those specific modifiers. So if I OCP all of these objects and come over here, this is a geometry nodes modifier behind it. So what I want is another geometry nodes modifier. And what we'll do is we'll just kind of pull this out so you can see. Now when you toggle this on and off, I'm only toggling the is viewport modifier. All right, and so that's gonna be very useful. And it's only going to delete the modifier that has that um, node group on it as well. So you're not going to delete anything you don't want. You're not gonna turn off anything you don't want. And it's gonna give you all of the control. Some buttons coming like this one is grayed out. This is gonna be custom proxies, which are gonna be available soon. However, for now, if you don't wanna use the convex hole, which is one of the ads that someone mentioned, they're like, hey, why don't we just put something nice and custom in here? Well, we can use anything that you can model. Whatever you wanna model out, you can now do that. And so you just come here to the low poly area, get your teardropper and select it. Now the icosphere is going to be labeled for Suzanne. We could turn on names here and it's just, it is individual. You'd have to do that for each one and specifically because you don't want to have names pop up for everything. Maybe you want it for one individual item. And so now this little button uh, used to switch between convex hole and bounding box, but the suggestion was, Hey, bounding box is really in the way for animation paths, trails, cameras, things like that. And so now what you can do, and <laughs> that's in the way too, but you can scale this down and apply that scale. And like I said, anything that you want, and then you just click the little button here and it's going to now give you a proxy of whatever you can come up with. And so if you were to uh, you know, hide that out, hide it from the renders, whatever, you're good. And the is viewport is behind this, so it doesn't matter. It's not going to render out. Now you also are able to take this, any one of these proxies and click solid, and it's the button and the name is gonna to switch to wire. And now you wanna say switch, uh, show wire in render. Now this is just for the viewport, the way it is, it's gonna come out at zero, but here's your wireframe selector. So 0 0.003 should be pretty good. Give it a second for complex meshes and then you'll have a very nice wireframe and that will actually render out. 
whereas the convex hull will not. And so if we throw in, I think I've already got a camera, so we'll just do this. Let me see what my render setup looks like. Scene lights, scene world, blah, blah. Let's turn on any HDRI, it doesn't matter. And I'll go ahead and click render. And I am using Blender 4.0.2, so we're gonna see what this does is we know for sure um, that it's actually rendering the lighting a little bit different now. So I didn't turn it off in the render, but you can see the little icosphere down there, but the icosphere does not show up. The original mesh object shows up, which is the idea. And the wireframe does show up because that's by design. So the wireframe is actually uh, meant to show up. Now, another thing to note is that you are able to add a material to this because it's set up. Um, still working on fine tuning that, but you are able to come over here and add a material to that. So if by chance you rendered that out, uh, you would still be able to see your material on the mesh. Okay, so that's cool, that works. So other than that, if you were to turn off the show wire render, you will also have a low poly slider, which I think can be useful for uh, highly complex mesh objects. You'll be able to just kind of bring it down a little bit so it doesn't show, um, doesn't have as many faces and verts and so on. So now for the, the big kicker here, if we are to copy a few more of these out so we can get a lot of viewport, like make it just a little heavier. And you've got a few buttons over here. One's wireframe for whatever object is selected. And if you don't have that object selected, there's a button. It's automatically gonna select it. Then you've got a drop down list and you can iterate through every single object and have you know a number of controls, but your main controls are right here. And so if you don't want that big drop down menu, you don't have to have it. And so you'll have wireframe, you'll have names on and off. This is gonna be cast shadow, whatever, just threw it in there. This is gonna be your access. This is gonna bring the 3D cursor back to the center of the world origin, which I have to tell you is super annoying when control S doesn't work, but now it works when I'm doing a tutorial. Uh, but you have a button for that. And then the little eyeglasses here, you click that, and you'll have your scene and everything in it. So let's go ahead and let's delete all of those proxies. I love that feature, I really do. And if you don't have anything selected, it's also, it's gonna say select an object first. So don't, you know, don't get frustrated. If it's not there, just click on it. And if there's no OCP modifier on that object, nothing's gonna show up. And if by chance you killed something over here, uh, just delete it and then re and institute another modifier. So we've got quite a few. Let's hit A for all here. That's not quite as many faces and so on as I really wanted, but whatever. So once you have this, you've got a total of 125,000 triangles. And so now if we go ahead and OCP all of these objects and you don't like the uh, performance in the viewport, and this is one of the things I'm gonna add so you can automatically switch and load up a vert, uh, whatever you wanna do. Just an idea for everybody. So if I add in a single vert, I think it throws me into edit mode. Yes, it does. So I would take the vert and then I can take my Suzanne and I can grab the vert and I'm now uh, running it that way if you want. And that's gonna bring down the um, poly count and everything else like considerably. So there's one option for you right there. And so, yeah, this is uh, pretty decent. You can go through and turn everything off, delete everything at one time and all those modifiers are gone. And if you don't like the screen size, I have a preset here that'll zoom it in to 1.25 scale. And then if you revert, it goes back to one, which is normal what it should be. And then for your store properties, obviously you have a list here. If you OCP all the objects, like I said, you can iterate through there. Don't need to cover that. 
And if you wanted to collapse all this and then start storing properties, you can do that. A for all, store the scene, and then do whatever you want. Store again, and you're gonna get scale, location, and rotation for all mesh objects. And then if you want to iterate through those, you can do that. If you have any lights in the scene, like I got a light here, I can go to this property. I believe I did store that last one, so I should be able to just hit, uh, well, I got a little crick in my neck. There's a bit of put it to like blue. Um, we can change the power down, whatever, change the radius, and then I'll just add everything again. It doesn't matter. And you can change and scrub through there, and it'll change all these values for you. Uh, but that's about it. I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for the subscribes. Thanks for my new uh, four new patrons. I really appreciate that as well. If you jump into Patreon every month, everything I get, including some actual exclusive add-ons that I'm not going to put on Gumroad, I'm not going to put them on Blender Market, I'm only putting some of those on Patreon, and you can go pick those up. OCP is everywhere, so you better get that from Gumroad, from Blender Market, or as a patron. Appreciate you guys watching, and happy blending. Catch you in the next one.